Hello, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, I want to jump right into the Word of God. I really do not like to waste time um, because I know people's time are valuable and it's evening time. You have things to do and um, I I just don't like to waste time. Um, Tonight, I want to talk to you about the power in being transparent and honest. And I've given a little small nugget throughout the week about what we'll be talking about. And um, this is something that the Lord has dealt with me about um, a while ago last year, maybe about around September, I believe, maybe well October, September, somewhere around in in that area. Um, The Lord began to deal with me about learning to be real, um, learning to be honest with self. And so... (laughs) Um, This is something that I want to share with you tonight, and it's going to be more so of a teaching session tonight. And um, I really believe that God wants to speak to all of us, you and me tonight, if you can just, you know, take a few moments um, out to hear what God has to say from his word. And what does God think about um, us being transparent? Why is it so important? And um, the funny thing is every answer, every question that we have, every problem that we're facing in life, it's found in God's word. And so if you can learn to just become faithful and um, committed and dedicated to the word of God, whether you are saved or not saved yet, it doesn't matter. The Bible is, is for everybody, right? So you can learn something and you'll be surprised. And, um, but anyways, again, we're talking about the power in being transparent and honest. And so with that being said, let's pray first and then we'll get into the word of God. Father, we thank you so much for the great opportunity that you have given us together um, to Open this book, God, open the word of God, open the Bible and see what you have to say to us today, Lord, to bring healing to our lives, God, to bring correction to us, Father. God, I pray that the word will be life changing these few moments that we have together. Let it be life changing. Let it change the both of us, God. Let your word bring transformation in our lives, Father God. Let your presence dwell on this video also tonight, God. We thank you, God. Give us understanding, Lord, those who are watching, the viewers that going, that's going to be watching tonight. God, give them understanding of what's going to be said tonight. Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And so um, let's start in First um, John chapter 1, verse 9. And before I read that scripture, I just want to read some notes to you tonight. And then I think I'm going to do my um, scriptures at the end. Do something a little bit different tonight. I want to give you the definition of transparency. What is transparency? Here's what it is. Transparency is the condition of being see-through. It's just like a glass. I don't have a glass here. I should have brought one. But it's just like a glass or a bottle, you know, without the water being in there. But uh, Or with the water being in there, to a certain extent, we're able to what see through the bottle. And so the Lord requires us. To be like a glass. He requires us to be transparent, honest, being able to see on the other side. He doesn't like us to live double lives. He doesn't doesn't like us to say one thing and do another thing or or you portray something on the outside. But behind closed doors, that's the real you. But you don't show the real you. And so tonight, that's what I want to a part of what really what I want to talk about is how do we learn to be real and why is it important to God? Why does he require us saved and unsaved to be just be real, just be raw? Number one, it's because it is one of the characteristics of who God is. God is a God of integrity. God is a God of truth. He's a God of light. He's a God of transparency. He's a God of honesty. So because he is a God of honesty and transparency, he requires us as well to be like him. We're created to be like God. We're created to be in the Bible says that we was created in his image and in his likeness. So, number one, we're called to be transparent, transparent and honest because God is honest, because God is transparent. You say you want to be a Christian. You say you want to be like Christ. You want to be like God. So let's be like him. These are this is one of the ways um, we're able to be like Christ is just be real, man. And I realize even in my own life, let's just be transparent just for a moment. I realized in my own life that I had a lot of darkness in my life because I wasn't being honest. We try to, you know how Christians try to be, we try to, you know, portray one thing, like I said, on the outside and we love to act churchy and be super spiritual and all these kind of things. And, And so we act like, you know, that we can't show the other side. Like, no, I'm not in the spirit realm 24 seven. 
I got flesh like everybody else. I got issues like everybody else. You understand? I have battles like everybody else. I'm trying to overcome just like everybody else. You understand? I have to repent for some things that I do in my own life. I have to repent about thoughts in my mind, whatever my, my whatever the case may be. I got to repent about, uh, 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 you know, words that may cut out of my, come out of my mouth that I should be saying. And so, and so, but my point is that as we as we learn to be honest and transparent, we become relatable to others. And as we become relatable to others, we're able to make to make a connection with other people and to be able to help bring freedom in their lives. But how can I really help somebody when you really don't know what's going on going on in my life? How can I help somebody and I can't be real about who I am? What about my struggle? Why do why, why I just want to know your struggle, but I can't talk about mine. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to learn to be transparent. I want you to listen to this. Um, I'm, let me finish reading this definition. Transparency is a condition of being see, being of seeing, excuse me, of being see through. Then it says it's to show or reveal both sides. That's what a, a bottle does. That's what a glass does. We're able to see on both sides. And that's what transparency is. You may say, what is honesty? What is uh, what does it mean to be honest? To be honest means to be free. I love this to be free of deceit and untruthfulness. Let me say this. God, you may not like this, but it's the truth. It's God's word. God hates liars. So he, he doesn't necessarily hates the person, but he hates what they do. God hates us lying. Be a woman of truth, a woman of integrity. Be a man of truth, a man of integrity. Let's fight to be like Christ. He's a man of integrity. He tells the truth all the time. The Bible says that there is no darkness in him. There is no lies in him. And so, again, this definition says to be honest means to be free of deceit and untruthfulness. It's to be sincere. Fight every single day to just be real. Stop caring about what everybody is thinking and saying about you. Stop caring about. No, 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 no. I'm being real. You could say I may have my flaws. I may have my issues. But guess what? I'm working on me. God is working on me and I'm going to come out in success. I'm going to come out in victory because I'm walking in the light of God's word. He commanded me to confess my sins. He commanded me to be transparent and honest with people. If you got unforgiveness in your heart, bitterness. Let God bring deliverance in your life by you sitting down, being mature and having a conversation with those people and saying, hey, I just don't like you or saying, hey, I've, I've had some bitterness towards you because of something you said two years ago to me. Oh, I didn't like the way you did my mom or whatever the case may be. But you have to learn to be mature and let's let's grow up. Right. Let's grow up. Let's mature as adults and just be real. Be honest with yourself, number one, because if you can't be honest with yourself, you cannot be honest with people. And if you cannot be honest with people and you can't be honest with yourself, what in the world do you how, how in the world do you think that you could be honest with God? No, 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 no. I come first. I have to be real with Nathaniel first. I got to be real with Nate first. I got to be real with with uh, 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 Jr. first. In Jesus name. And as I learn to become that way with myself, I can easy to have a conversation with a conversation with somebody and say, I really don't like you. I don't like what you said to me. I've been bitter towards you lately. You made me upset the other day. But what we do, we act immature and we keep everything in. We can't be real. And we'll smile in their face. You know, hey, how you doing? No, good. Well, you don't like them. Instead of pulling your little fake smile aside, going to them, saying, hey, let me talk to you after church or, you know, one of your coworkers or whatever the case may be. You know, you know, I, I, I listen, I, I got some problems and I, 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 you know, I've been faking and I really don't like you to be around me. This is how I really feel. And, and, and l- let me just say this. When you do that, when God can see that you are a woman or a man of truth, a man of integrity, a man of transparency, a, a, a man of, a, of, of honesty or a woman of honesty and transparency. Let me tell you something. The more you become transparent with people, the more you become transparent with yourself, the more you become transparent with God. God would give and extend more mercy to you with your flaws. The more mercy will be given to you with your own issues. Why? Because God loves integrity. God loves transparency. He can't look over that. Whether you're saved or not saved, he'll extend his great mercy towards you.
We all mess up. We all jacked up, mess up, need God, need deliverance in our lives. But we get deliverance and breakthrough in our lives through transparency and honesty. And so this note here I have tonight, it says it is through transparency and honesty that breakthrough and healing can take place in our lives. It is through that place where God is able to bring breakthrough, deliverance in my life, whatever I'm facing in my life, whatever you're facing. He can he can he can work that thing out. But you got to be real with yourself. If you got a money money problem, you always broke. Find out why you always broke. Be real. No, I don't do that. I say my mother. Stop lying. Some of us, we know we bad with money. We're not using money wisely. We say, come on now. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> come on. Sometimes we're just not good stewards. But as we're honest and say, you know what, Lord, I blew it. I spent some money I wasn't supposed to. Sp- I, want- I wasn't supposed to um, spend. God, help me with with my money issues. Help me to stop being broken, using my money the wrong way. And through that transparency, don't you know that God would bring breakthrough and help you be more disciplined with your finances? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And someone said, someone is saying, they said, um, everyone isn't receptive to your transparency. That is so true. But what I come to realize is that as long as I've been transparent on my side, that's on them. Now I can be free in my spirit. That's all on them. And I love that. They says everyone isn't receptive to your transparency. That is so true. And most people won't be. Most people won't. But reach the but reach those who you can reach with your trans with, with your transparency and with your honesty. Bring killing in your life because you have been transparent. And that's what God wants us to do. Let me hear up a second because I really want to get to some scriptures. But another note here I have God cannot help those who keep secrets and can't be real about oneself. Then it says, honesty releases him on our behalf. If you need God to do something in your life, learn to be real. And as you become real, God will listen. God will move. He will. He will release the supernatural in your life through your honesty or through your repentance. You can also say that's what true repentance is. It's just being honest. That's really what it is. Being transparent. It's, it's, it's repentance before God. Just Lord, I'm listen, God, I've been battling. Lord, I have the struggle. God, there's a stronghold in my life. God, I can't stop drinking. I can't stop fornicating. God, it's a real problem in my life. God, I need you to move on my behalf. I need you to help me to overcome what I'm facing. God, help me with it. I just want to be angry with them because they wasn't there for me or they lied to me or they mistreated me and my children. God, I'm bitter towards them. Lord, I need help. And through that, through that, you'll begin to see Breakthrough and healing take place in your life. And there's nothing that God won't do for you because you've learned to be real. You've learned to be real with yourself. You've learned learned to be real with people. You've learned to be real with God. And then it says transparency also enables others to relate to our triumphs and tragedies. So as I'm honest and transparent with you all tonight and in, 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 you know, in, in other time at, at other times, you know, the here right here, it says transparency also enables our others, excuse me, others to relate to our triumphs and tragedies, creating a pathway that builds mutual trust. You all can learn to trust me using myself as an example, because I'm being transparent with you. I'm being relatable to you, letting you know that I don't have it all together just because I'm called to preach. And most of the time, it's the preachers that got most of the issues. Can we be real tonight? It's really us that got most of the problems, most of the struggles behind closed doors. But I'm choosing as a man of God, I'm choosing to just be real because I want freedom in my life. And I want to draw people into the kingdom of God. If I'm going to draw you into God's kingdom, I have to be real. I got struggles just like you. We need we both need to be on the altar in Jesus name. Here's another note. I'm almost through so we can get right into these scriptures. Another note. I think I said this, but I'm going to say it again. Being real brings healing in your life. And I'm going to prove that to you tonight. Being real brings healing in our lives. Next note. Transparency is the best policy. And honesty is good for the soul. You want healing in your soul? You want healing in your mind? Just tell the truth. Stop lying. Stop being deceitful. Just be honest. Just be real and watch healing comes in your mind. Watch your your thoughts begin to come clear. 
your, your, your conscience is not being eaten by itself because you, you haven't you haven't told the truth. Just be real. Be a woman and a man of authenticity, of authenticity. And here is another note here. It says God sees and knows everything. So we might as well be transparent and honest about everything with him, ourselves and with others as we are led to do so. Because there is some things that people can't handle and we don't need to share. So we want to be led by the spirit of God. We want to be led by our, our spirits. God speaks to our spirits and through our spirits. That is what we obey. So you want to be led in your spirit on what to say, what not to say, on what to share, what not to share. In Jesus name. And my last note tonight, and then we're going to get into these scriptures again. The more transparent you become with God, the more mercy you receive from him. I put for him, but it's from him. And with that being said, let's go to first John chapter one, verse nine. First John chapter one, verse nine says, if we confess that, that, that go that word, confess or be transparent. If we can confess or acknowledge our sins, our mess ups, our weaknesses, our bondages in our lives. The Bible says he is faithful. And just that means righteous and he is faith. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, my mess ups, my my struggles, my flaws. He's able to forgive me. And the Bible says and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? Again, it is doing things the wrong way. That's what unrighteousness is. But the Bible says this again. This is Jesus Speaking to us through his word, he said that if you can just be real about your sins, if you can just have a true heart of repentance, he said that he'll forgive you. You don't have to walk around with a bad conscience. You don't have to walk around dirty and feeling disgusted. He just said that he'll cleanse us if I can learn to be real with myself and be real with God. There is nothing that he won't do in my life. If I can confess that weakness, I don't care if you're struggling with homosexuality. I don't care if you're struggling with feminism. I don't care if you're struggling with the other, you know, lacking the, the same sex, whatever your weakness is. I don't care if you're a fornicator. I don't care if you got sickness in your body because of something. It, it doesn't matter. He said that if we can just be honest, he'll, he'll forgive us. I can be cleansed. I don't care. I don't care if you told a lot of day. I don't care if you cheated on your taxes. You can be healed and delivered and set free by the power of God through transparency and honesty of what he's spoken in his word. And with that being said, let's go. Let me hurry up. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 20. I said this was, this was going to be a teaching session, but I feel that preaching anointing coming on me tonight. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 20. It says, we acknowledge. So, here are the children of Israel. They're saying that we're going to acknowledge our sins. They're, they're saying we acknowledge we, we, we become real. God. Now we become transparent because they know that God has. They know that God requires us from us to bring breakthrough in our lives. We got to be real about ourselves. We got to be real with people. Let that forgiveness go. Let that bitterness go through transparency, through honesty. But. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 20 says, I love this. We acknowledge or we become real, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers. Then it says, for we have sinned against you. This is the whole purpose of God. Why he wants us and require us to be real because it says, for we have sinned against you. We mess up every day in something. But he said, I know you're going to mess up. I've already made an atonement on your behalf. And that's the power of the blood of Jesus, what Christ did on that cross. And he's saying, just be honest. Just be real with yourself. You know you're struggling. Be real with me. I bring that deliverance in your life. Don't worry about how you, you know, when am I deliverance going to come? Just be real and I'll work on your weakness. I'll work on your struggle. Some of you all may have a lying, pro a lying problem. You lie about everything. But God is saying, you be real with yourself. Yeah, I'm a liar. L l l l listen, Lord. I'm, listen, I know I be lying. <laughs> and the Bible says that he said that if you can just be real, he'll help you. He'll forgive you. He'll wash you in the blood of the lamb. Every time you mess up, bam, God, I messed up again. Let's be transparent and, and honest in everything that we do. 
in everything that we say, everything that comes out of your mouth. Let it be truth. Let it be integrity. Let it be maturity. Let it be transparency. Let it be honesty. I feel that that preaching anointing coming on me tonight. I told you I wanted to I wanted to teach tonight. But let's go to Jeremiah chapter three, verse 13. I got to hurry up. Thank you, Jesus, for the word of God. Lord, help me to be transparent. I try my best to live what I preach. It is a challenge, but I don't like to preach something and I'm not living it. That's being hypocritical. Therefore, I'm not a man of integrity and honesty. I must live what I preach. And Jeremiah chapter three, verse 13 says only acknowledge. I go that word acknowledge again. Only be transparent. Only acknowledge your iniquity, which is the sins of the heart. Things that people cannot see. Be real about those things. Yeah. Yeah. Be real about your envy and your, your, your envy problem that you got going on on the inside. Whoever that may be. That you have transgressed, transgressed against the Lord, your God. What are transgressions? Transgressions are things on the outside that people can't see, like your nasty attitude or your smart mouth. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. That's transgression. And it says that we have done both iniquities and transgressions against God. And it says, and have scattered your ways to the strangers under every green tree. And you have not obeyed my voice, say of the Lord. And so God is saying, you need to acknowledge your transgression. You need to acknowledge your weakness. You need to acknowledge your iniquity. Then he says, and you have not obeyed my voice, say of the Lord. What did he tell them to do? Be transparent. Be repentant, be honest, let that bitterness and that anger go. Whatever the, again, whatever your weakness and your issues may be, let it go. He wants us. I, I cannot stress this to you enough. Those who are coming in now, again, we're talking about the power in being transparent and honest. We have to learn to be men of integrity, women of integrity. Be real with your spouse. Be real with your, with your husband. Be real with your wife. Stop lying. Stop cheating. Be real or leave them alone. Don't cause other people pain because you won't be honest. That's a personal problem. You got to learn to, we have to learn to be mature. Be honest and say, I'm jacked up. I'm messed up. I have problems. I have weaknesses. This is my real issue. I need help. And through that, again, through that, there is nothing that God cannot do for us. And with that being said, let's go. Let's look at one of the favorite characters that everybody loves. In God's word. Let's go to Psalms chapter 51. Everybody knows David. Everybody knows David's junk mess. And if, if anybody messed up, it was David. David had a person killed. David slept with somebody else's wife. Not anybody. He, listen. If anybody messed up, it was David. Come on, y'all. But my point that I'm trying to make from David, one of the main reasons that David, that God showed such great mercy and compassion towards David. It wasn't that he was perfect. He was long from being perfect, even though he strived for it, which we should be doing. But God extended so much mercy and grace towards him and his life was still blessed because David was real with God and saying, Lord, cleanse me for I, for I have sinned against you. He says, hide your face from my sins. Blot out my transgressions. Why in the world would David talk like that? Because David understood the power in being transparent and honest about David's weaknesses. And so Psalms 51 verse 3 says, for I acknowledge that go that word again for the third time. For I acknowledge or that means to be truthful or to take responsibility of your own actions. For it says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. I know what I did. I know that I lied. I know that I cheated. I know I fornicated. I know I messed up. I know I was, I, I was looking at pornography when I wasn't supposed to. Whatever your issues are. Let's be real. Let's be honest. We fall short in different areas and in different things. Ain't nothing for me to be ashamed of. I told you I'm jacked up, y'all. I'm messed up. <laughs> That's why I stay in prayer every single day as much as possible. Spending time with God saying, Lord, help me. I'm crying out for his grace to overcome. Listen, y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I want to go to heaven. I don't have time to be playing games with, with the world. Y'all, if y'all want to do that, that's on you. 
But I truly believe some of you, some of you all that are watching tonight, you really have a heart to really serve God. Some of you all have a struggle with living for God and, 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 and living the life that God has called you to live and fulfilling God's purpose for your life because you want to compromise. You want to please everybody. You got friends that you don't want to let go. And until you choose to change, you will always be bound. You cannot be free unless you become transparent enough and say, God, I need your help. God, I want to do this thing right. And through that, God will begin to just just blow your mind what he can do in your life. He'll he'll give you new friends. Why? Because you have a truly desire to do and live the life that he's called you to live. And so with that being said, let's go to um, let's see here. Let's go. I'm going to show you one more example of confession, of transparency. And then we're going to talk a little bit about um, about how God sees everything. Then we're going to end there. Let's go to Second Chronicles, chapter 30, verse 22. Second Chronicles, chapter 30, verse 22. And hopefully you all can go back to these scriptures on your own time. And I really hope when you're watching me that you're not taking me for a joke or just looking at me. Oh, look at the little preacher. He's preaching. Don't don't do that, because now we're, we're in God's word. This is not a game. This is real to me. This is authentic. God's word is nothing to play with. We're living in the last days and God is soon to come back. And y'all see all these people dying around us. We don't have time to be playing games. Stop. Don't play games with God. Don't play games with, with, with God's word. This is it, it ain't this is not the season to be lukewarm. It is not the season to be uh, 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 compromising and doing what we want to do. You better be real with God and say, Lord, I have a problem. Help me to be transparent and honest about my issues. God, just be real with God. And through that, God will save you. He will bring healing to your heart. He'll bring deliverance in your life. Why? Because I've learned to be transparent and honest about my flaws. God, I'm jacked up. I need help. I'm having a God. Listen, God, I, Lord, I need you. God, help my mind. I feel like I'm losing my mind. My thoughts are everywhere. I, I, I'm struggling with insecurities. God, I'm, I'm having a problem with my mind. God, I'm having these, these negative thoughts in my mind. God, I'm having suicidal thoughts. Whatever your weakness is, be real with God. Be real with yourself. And I'm telling, I'm telling you, I promise you that God will bring deliverance in your life. Healing, breakthrough will come. Ah, I feel good tonight. But let, let's, let's just... Let me calm down. Let's get into God's word. Second, second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 22. I don't want to move ahead of myself. I said I was going to teach, not preach. Now let's read the latter part of, of second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 22. It says, and making confession. Now there go that word again for the fourth time, I believe the third or fourth time and making confession or oh, that word can be used as uh, making repentance or making again transparency and honesty. Those are just the terms that I chose to use for my title. But you can really use any of these terminologies and making confession to the Lord talking about God. See, we're not it's not just being honest with people. It ain't just being honest about with myself. No, let me be honest with God. The one that has the power to put myself put my behind in hell. Because I can't be real with myself. I can't be real with other people that I got a problem or I got some in my heart towards them. But it says, confess it to the Lord. Why? Because he's the one that can bring breakthrough and healing in your spirit from your past. Through transparency, through confessing, Lord, listen, this is, this is the real issue that I've been facing for the last five years in my life. Or like I said, using again, not accusing anybody of anything, but using this as an example. If you, let's say you're married and you have been having an affair, whatever the problem may be, you can also have an affair in your, in your, in your mind. It ain't just physically. God looks at everything. My mind, my thoughts that people can't see. It ain't just about what we can see. No, let me confess the stuff that you cannot see. What's causing the anger that you do see? What's causing the bitterness in my heart? What's causing these issues in my life? Why am I struggling? Sit down for a while and say, let me, let me do a self-evaluation on me. When, why, why have I been acting out like this? Why is my attitude always off with everybody and, ain't done, and they ain't done not one thing to me? Some have, some not. But why do I have to respond the way I do? Let's do a self-evaluation. And through that self-evaluation, uh, 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 through that can come out of that is transparency and honesty. And say, oh, that's what's causing my attitude. That's, what, that's why I let men treat me any kind of way. That's why I give in so easily. That's why I'm struggling with this. Yeah, uh-huh. 
Yes. This is, God, this is something that the Lord is still teaching me. Go to authority and be real. Tell them your struggles. Get some counseling. Again, we're talking about the power, the authority, the change, the transformation that can come through transparency and honesty. But it says, and making confession to the Lord, God of their fathers. Now, with that being said, let's turn the corners just for a moment here. And let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. I want to talk to you as well about how God sees everything. Why, again, it's important for us to just be real with ourselves, with people and with God. Let's see why it's very important. Let me let me let me prove it to you in God's word. These are not just my words. These are the words of Christ from his word and what he's spoken in his word. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. I thank God for the word of God because you know why? It corrects me. It corrects Nathaniel thinking. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Correct me. Keep on correcting me. Keep on God. Whatever God got to do in my life, let him do it so that I can be right. God, if you got to expose my weakness because I have chosen not to be because I have chosen not to be repentant like I should. God expose me so that I can get that thing right. If God has to release humiliation in your life, if that's what it takes to get you and move you into the realm of transparency and honesty, transparency and honesty, let God do it. Let him do it. And I pray that he will do it in Jesus name. But hopefully God doesn't have to get us to that place. We can just sit down humbly and say, Lord. This is what's going on in my life. This is why I feel like this towards people. God, get this bitterness out of my life. Get this anger out of my life. God, help me to have, get this unforgiveness out of my life. Lord, help me to stop fornicating. It's been rough. Lord, you know we got these issues with this flesh. God, help me. Lord, I do enjoy what I do. God, help me. I'm struggling. And I'm telling you, again, through that, listen, through that transparency, there's nothing that God won't do for you. He'll bring healing in your life and healing in your heart. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work, every work into judgment or bring it to the light with every secret thing. Again, we're talking about being real about things that people cannot see with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let truth come out of your mouth. Let the realness come out of your mouth. Let integrity come out of your mouth. Let transparency release be, be released out of your mouth. Let uh, honesty come out of your mouth. In Jesus name, what is again? Again, what does it mean to be transparent, to be able to see through? Let us see both sides of you. Don't just show me the nice you. No, let me see that little nasty attitude that you got. Yeah, let us see it and just be real. Say, yep, I got a bad attitude. My attitude is real nasty. Sometimes I'm nasty. I don't even know why I'm the way I am. It's OK to be honest. We all listen. We all got our struggles. And that's why I've learned to just be real with people, man. And like I'm I, like I've started this counseling with 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 millennials, um, giving empowering millennials through biblical truths, you know. But as I've started that, I've learned to just be more. I've learned to just be real with the, with young people. If I want them to be free, just be real about my struggles, what I'm facing now and what I used to do, too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yes. Even, you know, even in high school. <laughs> Even in high school, in my 12th grade year, I begin to I begin to compromise. I got a little girlfriend, you know, I'm dating and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and, you know, <laughs> you know, preaching. I had the Bible study class that I, I had a um, Bible study class that I started at school and stuff like that. Um, my 11th grade year and it went on into my 12th grade year. But the Lord, had, I started to compromise and the Lord. But I, let me let me just say this. Let me not go too fast. I started to compromise and the Lord told me to stop the Bible study class. Now, why would God tell me to do that? Because God is a God of integrity and he knows that I cannot live a double life. You cannot preach one thing and then you out here doing another. Stop the Bible study class and get yourself together. And so I chose to become rebellious. I chose to become secret. And through that, I fell. And I looked like the fool. I looked like they fool my, uh, uh, you know, that year, not only that year, but, you know, the following year when we finished school. You know, when we finish the school year, she end up getting pregnant and we end up having a baby together. Do you understand how how embarrassing that is as a man of God, a preacher? You know, you, you, do you understand the, the severity of that? But that happened. Why would God allow that to happen? Why would God let, let the whole world know all the classmates that I preach to that I shared the gospel with? Why in the world would God expose me like that? Because he cares for me, because I would not repent. I would not be honest and transparent. 
So he exposed me to use that as a tool to bring deliverance and healing and breakthrough in my life. And through that, and let me just say this, it worked. It drew me back to the kingdom of God fully. I, I, I didn't really backslid all the way, but I was a compromiser. I became hypocritical. But thank God for his, for his great mercy, his grace, his strength in our lives. His great mercy that we can get ourselves together and say, Lord, listen, I'm jacked up. God, I'm struggling. Lord, help me, God. I want to make this thing right. God, I want to forgive these people. Lord, help me to forgive myself. God, I'm struggling. These are my weaknesses. Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm being honest with you, with myself, and with people. Lord, I have problems. And so, again, it says, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Again, that's Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. And I wanted to read some more to you, but I'm running out of time tonight. But I wanted to read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 says the same thing. That God is eyes is everywhere. He can see. You might as well just be real. Just be real with God. And so um, (laughs) and so through that, again, through transparency, through honesty, there is nothing that God cannot do in our lives. Again, he can bring healing, deliverance and breakthrough in our lives because I've learned to be real with God. I've learned to be transparent for those who are coming in now. Let me just read a few um, notes to you that we read at the beginning and then I'm going to go ahead and end. It says it is through transparency and honesty that that breakthrough and healing can take place in our lives. Let me be real about my struggles and what I'm facing, what I have allowed to come out of my mouth that is not of God. Another note here. God cannot help those who keep secrets and can't be real about oneself. That's why I failed in my, you know, in my 12th grade year because I couldn't be honest about my weeds. I knew I was struggling. All you had to do is go to the leader and say, leader, I'm struggling. I'm listen, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm in my 20s. I'm having some struggles with my flesh. I need you to help me. And it just 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 through that transparency could have saved me from fornication, saved me from having a baby out of wedlock. And I'm not saying that my child isn't a blessing, but still some things that we some things we can we can avoid if we can just be real with one another, be real with ourselves. And I ain't read that other verse, James chapter five, verse 16, where it says confess your faults to one another. Y'all ain't ready for that scripture. James chapter five, verse 16 says, confess your thoughts one to another. Therefore, he wants me to be honest and transparent with other people. It's it's found in God's word. Tell the truth. What are you facing in your life? Why are you so embarrassed to tell the truth about your weakness? Because you care about the opinions of people more than you care about the opinion of the, or the facts of God. And so here it says, God, can I help those who keep secrets and can't be Excuse me. And can't be real about oneself. Honesty releases releases him on our behalf. Next note. Transparency also enables others to relate to our triumphs and our tragedies, creating a pathway that builds mutual trust. Next note. Being real brings healing in our lives. According to James chapter five, verse 16, he says that if you can confess your thoughts one to another, he said, I bring healing in your life. Why? Because you're being real. Once you expose it, you know how much you know how much healing that brings in me and other people when when we're just we're just sharing things. You know how you have your little person you talk to, you know, don't you feel a lot after 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 you're done talking? Why? Because why? Because transparency and honesty, it releases healing in your life. The spirit of healing begin to flow in your spirit. Next note, transparency is the best policy. Stick to that. Transparency is the best policy and honesty is good for the soul. It'll bring healing in your mind. It'll bring healing in your soul, in your intellect, in your will, in your emotions. I'm healed and I'm delivered and I'm set free by the power of God through the power of transparency and healing. It is only God that can release that in our lives. Here's my last note. God sees and knows everything. So we might as well be transparent and honest about everything with him, ourselves and with others as we are led to do so again. Because we can't some things some things we can't share with people because, you know, some people can't handle certain things. But that doesn't mean that you can't be honest with God and with yourself for that season until he release you to share certain things. And then the last note says here, the more transparent you become with God, the more mercy you receive from him. And I learned that one, that last sentence through 
my own experience with God. And so, Lord, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Lord, we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would give people a heart tonight. Those who have watched and those who are watching, give them a heart to receive the word of glad. See the word of God tonight. See, receive it with gladness, God, in Jesus name. Help us to be in, empowered by the word of God. Help us, our, help us to meditate upon the word of God that we are able to say, you know, Lord, I haven't been as real and transparent and honest with myself lately. I've been prideful. I've been arrogant. God, I've been full of myself lately. Lord, I haven't been honest with people like I should. God, I haven't been honest with you like I should. Lord, help us, God. Help them. Help me to become transparent and honest, God. Help us to overcome. Help us to, to do this with your strength, with your grace, with the great mercy that you give us every day, every morning. You said that in your word, God, that, that, that your mercy is renewed every morning because you want us to be right with you. God, forgive us, Lord, for not being transparent, for not being honest, God, for being, li being liars, God, doing things that we shouldn't do, not being honest with people, having unforgiveness, having bitterness, God, being fornicators, Lord, forgive us for pornography, God, forgive us for lies, God, forgive us, God, forgive us, Lord, for everything that we have done. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. God, help us to be real on our jobs. Help us to be men and women of integrity, men and women of power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, help us, Lord, and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. We vow to you, God, that we will be transparent and honest. We will walk in the fear of God. We will walk in God in, in keeping all of your commandments that you have called us to walk in. We will be honest with the authority that you have established in our lives, God. We will be free by the power, by the Spirit of God. It is a Spirit of God that was on Jesus. The Bible says in, in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, that Jesus said, out of his own mouth, he said that, that the spirit of God has come up on me that I may bring healing to the brokenhearted. God, you have been God, you have released your son Jesus to bring healing in our lives. We receive it now in Jesus' name by faith. Whether we feel it or not, we receive that impartation of healing, of breakthrough in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray this, Lord, with confidence, with authority that you have given me as a believer. As a man of God, on my behalf and theirs, in Jesus' mighty name, we give you the glory, the honor, the praise, in Jesus' name. And I pray that everybody will have a, a blessed rest of their week, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. I will see you on the next one. Might be next week, but it's usually every other week, either Tuesday or Thursday. Of course, you'll see the flyer when it comes out. Be blessed. And like I always end my videos, stay in faith, stay in faith, stay in faith, and keep God first. God bless you. Bye-bye.